Hi, uh, yeah, I'm um, I'm Ross Burton. Uh, I'm a principal Yorkshire engineer at ARM. Um, this is sort of a co-presentation with uh, Bill Mills, uh, who's also at Linaro. Um, and we're going to be, talk be talking about generic ARM64, which is a new reference BSP that we're going to be proposing for uh, the uh, next release of Yocto uh, 5.0. Um, so anyone who has dealt with uh, older, particularly ARM boards, knows that everyone is slightly different. Um, sort of special pieces of firmware with special uh, custom patches, which are probably not upstreamed, crazy fast system layouts, uh, old kernels with a thousand patches on top. It's kind of chaotic. Um, but this can be improved. And the goal is for generic ARM64 to be the ARM version of the generic x86 machines, which have a large number of compatible machines and it just works out of the box. Um, I, I'm ex Intel, uh, and Intel is quite smug about how essentially every Intel board works in exactly the same way. One kernel boots on everything. Uh, the secret here is that the hardware and the firmware have very well defined interfaces. Um, the firmware is assumed to be present and works, and the kernel probes the hardware to determine what's available instead of it all being hard coded. None of this is special to Intel hardware. Um, you know, anyone else can take this approach. So, ARM has created uh, a thing called system, a program called System Ready, which is just works for ARM. This is defining a strong interface between the operating system and the firmware. It doesn't define the implementation, just the functionality and interfaces. One of the underlying interfaces of this is UEFI that we all, um, let's say, know and love. And there's a strong expectation that firmware works and is already on the board. So uh, you know, you, you, your board you pick up from the shops, will have firmware on it already, but works. You're not expected to build firmware from scratch. There are several bands of system ready for different use cases. Uh, the, the classic one is system ready SR. Uh, this is workstations or servers. It looks a hell of a lot like uh, an Intel machine. Uh, it says uh, UEFI and ACP and other friends like that. Um, for the embedded world, this is quite heavy. Um, so there's also system ready IR, which is more aimed at embedded system on chips. Um, this is still UEFI, uh, but does allow either ACP or device tree for the hardware probing and you know figuring out what's available. Um, so in theory, and this is actually well, in practice as well, you can pass the system ready IR conformance tests with a, some decent firmware and U boot because it has all the functionality you need. Um, there are many boards that are passing this conformance test um, and as, assuming that you have relatively decent hardware, this is just a matter of writing competent firmware. Um, obviously, lots of caveats in there, but it is just a software problem. Um, Interesting fun fact is that the system ready test suites are actually built with Yocto. So if you pass the compliance test, you've booted the Yocto system. Um, so let's talk about what we're actually going to implement. Uh, the scope of generic ARM64. This will be part of Meta Yocto BSP uh, alongside the generic x86 machine. Um, this is also an evolution of the generic ARM64 machine, which currently sits in Meta ARM. So this isn't anything that's very new. Uh, it's been around for a year or so now. Um, the system ready team do test with it occasionally, uh, and we do know that people are actually using it. It will use Linux Yocto. Um, there will be patches, I'm sure, to make certain hardware work. Uh, but the expectation is this is stuff that's being upstreamed. Um, we do not want to be carrying terrible drivers forever because they've been kicked out of upstream or are not going to be attempted to go upstream. 
we will be testing um well build testing on the auto builder along with all the other machines um physical reference boards will be used to verify that the built images actually boot on real hardware uh, there won't be a lot of these boards but we will list a few uh, and bill will be talking about these in a minute um and ideally hopefully uh serial networking and storage works it's a pretty low bar but you know with fundamentals work on most boards then we're in a really good place uh there's also some things which are explicitly not going to happen this is not a 32-bit machine um the 32-bit world is uh like the wild west um and 64 bit is the glorious future so don't do 32 bit uh we won't be incorporating proprietary drivers um this is very much a vendor value add piece uh which will be specific to particular hardware so this is where a tuned machine comes in uh we won't be building firmware uh again this this is not generic <laughs> this is very specific to a particular board um, and the assumption is that firmware exists. Um, hopefully it's already on the board when you buy it new, or you can just download it and update it once, and then you're good. Um, vendors, we encourage to have firmware recipes in their, in their own layers. Uh, MetaRAM VSP, for example, can build all the firmware for the boards it supports. Um, TFA and TFM and SCP and Opti and so on. Um, also, this is not a replacement for any specific machine. Um, tuned machines for specific boards will still exist. You know, hopefully, they will be able to build on the build on the work that's happened in Generic ARM sixty four, uh, and just extend it or add some extra pieces. But I don't expect them to disappear. So, Ross, we had a question in chat before we move on. So okay. would you consider having USB hosting gadget support in the based feature set? Um, so <clears throat> the, the statement here is the minimum, and this is the minimum for a given board. Certainly the kernel configuration, um, you know, anything that works upstream with def config should theoretically work in generic ARM64. Yeah, I think we could add USB to the list of things that are definitely working. Uh, gadget is probably a bit interesting. Um, yeah, it should. We really hope it would work out the box. You know, if it's USB controllers aren't that unusual. Okay, let's let's go to the next one. Okay, and I shall pass over to you, Bill. Yeah, so <clears throat> Ross touched on this a bit, but I, I want to emphasize the fact that, you know, achieving system ready IR is not hard. Um, so the most of the boards in this category are using U boot and device tree. As Ross pointed out, that's not actually required, but the majority of boards are doing that. All the U boot, all the re all the UEFI that you need is already in U-Boot and has been for a couple of years now. Um, and more and more boards are being tested for this uh, every day. So if your platform isn't, um, you probably a matter of turning on some things in U-Boot. Um, now, you don't need to be system ready IR certified to run the generic ARM64. That's kind of a formality. Um, but it, it should be pretty easy to achieve system ready compatibility, um, at least as far as the generic ARM64 goes. Um, but generic ARM64 will work on system ready SR machines as well. Uh, initially, that's not our, our focus. Um, but uh, as time goes on, we'll probably start testing on that kind of a platform also. Uh, but right now, at least for the next release, we're focused on the, the IR as the main testing vehicle. Let's go to the next one. So <clears throat> Ross mentioned um, reference boards. Um, we're not going to have a ton of reference boards, um, but here's kind of the criteria that we're thinking about. So first off, um, you know, your your board has to work with upstream kernel. 
Um, this is required to be really a generic ARM64 um, compatible at all. Um, <clears throat> I, If I were the TSC, I would make it a requirement and that you don't have to carry patches in Linux Yocto. Um, but really, that's that's really what we're pushing for is to everybody get their stuff upstream. Um, but to be a good reference board, um, you need somebody needs to commit to testing that board um, so that when the auto builder produces images, those get tested and the test results triaged and and re recorded. So um, there's a commitment there. If, and then uh, I also think, and the Yocta Project TSC will make the final decision on this, but if it were up to me, I would say that a reference board has to be able to build its boot firmware uh, from OE. Um, now, when you're booting the boot, boot firmware, you can have extra layers, um, but it should be an OE-based uh, build. Um, now, the generic ARM64 image uh, that the auto builder is using is only Pocky. There's no other layers there. Of course, it's compatible with adding other layers to it, but the the base image upstream is just Pocky. Okay, next slide. So these are the boards, the two reference boards that we're focused on for the next release. Um, and the, the idea is that these remain um, in as reference boards for the foreseeable future. Um, the first is the Beagle Play from BeagleBoard.org. Um, this uses an AMTI AM62 platform um, with A53s. It's got an M4 on it also. And then um, from AMD Xilinx, the KV260, which is a Zinc MP board. Uh, again, A53s. Um, and then it has R5s on it as well. Um, both of these are reasonably priced boards, <clears throat> um, readily available. So uh, make good um, reference boards. Uh, what FPGA programming support will there be for the KB260? It's a little out of scope for the generic ARM64 image. Um, actually programming the FPGA, first off, um, KB260 will boot and run with zero content in the FPGA. Um, so that that's the first thing. Um, actually, programming the FPGA, uh, creating the bit file is out of scope from this. This is that's not really what we're here about. Um, it'd be interesting. I, um, I, we don't know yet whether the FPGA manager is going to make it in scope. Um, but that, uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, you can go look at, uh, what you can do for that. Vivaldo is, is one, but there's really good open source tools that, well, actually not for Zinc MP yet, but it's, it's making good progress. All right, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so the, we talked about testing a bit. Um, so the test coverage, at least for the initial release, we're, we're going to achieve parity with the existing hardware test plans. Um, if you look at what Edge Router used to do, uh, what BeagleBone does, um, that's kind of the, the level of testing that we're shooting for in the initial release. Um, at least on the Lenaro side, we don't plan on doing any manual tests, um, but we will look at doing more automation so that we can cover what the manual tests used to do. Um, and then <clears throat> if you look at the kernel CI project, they have some good boot tests as well. Um, we'd like to fold those in and run those at least. Uh, hopefully we can find a way to report those results back. Um, and then, you know, this is the basis. Um, we want this well in place um, by the 5.0 release in the springtime. And, and and be running all the time. Um, but then, you know, that's the basis and expand that over time. Um, more test coverage, more automation. Um, so 
<clears throat> Lenar will be do doing the testing for the KV-260, and Wind River has, has volunteered to test the Beagle Play. So what does this look like? So the auto builder will do the, the, the builds independently, um, and then we will trigger the testing. Uh, the testing will run asynchronously, and the results get collected. And then the results get returned to the Git repository that I have there in the slides, Yocto test results. Um, this is how the hardware testing has been run, and also some of the, um, I think all the overnight tests are run this way. Um, so this is existing infrastructure. I, I, I've looked at this a bit. I think there's probably some enhancements we need to do to the test results scripts. Um, but um, this is fundamentally in place today. We just need to um, automate, automate our end of it. Okay. Um, thanks, Ross, for taking care of some of the questions. Oh, this is uh, your slide again. <clears throat> yep, so it is. Okay, so um, where are we now? Uh, right at this precise moment, generic arm C4 exists in the meta arm layer. So if you want to have a play with it now, that's where it lives. Um, that is not being copied and pasted directly. It's being I'm being ed I'm editing it on its way as it moves into uh, as as a reference machine. Um, mainly because this currently just says use the def config, um, but Yocto reference machines need to use config fragments, and that is still work in progress. Um, the def config isn't perfect anyway. Uh, several machines need extra features added. So it's, the ARM def config is pretty good, but it's not perfect. Um, so that's work in progress. If you want to see exactly what's going on, there is a branch in the Pokey Country repository, get slash generic ARM64. Uh, it accumulates horrible patches, then gets rebased and flattened periodically. So at the moment, it's three neat commits, but yesterday it was 15 with sort of curses and R messages in the commit log. Uh, but yeah, this should all be ready fairly soon. Uh, so it can be part of the ScuffGap 5.0 release, uh, which is due in April and will be the next LTS. So we've got a pretty good thing to aim for. Um, there's some interesting changes to the machine as it goes from MetaRAM. Uh, the WIC, the file system it constructs is slightly different. It's a traditional EFI GPT thing, um, but it includes an init RAMFS now. So you get an init RAMFS with all your lovely kernel modules in, which is very useful when you kind of want to mount your SD device to boot your uh, machine. Um, I have a colleague in ARM who has been periodically testing these images on anything he can find. Uh, so from, was it uh, IoT gate, mini boards, up to uh, Marvel Thunder X servers, and it boots on all of them. So we're all happy about that. Um, so yeah, that's what I say. Uh, feel free to grab me on IRC. Uh, or Bill, if you want to talk about anything in particular. <laughs>